what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we are here back in finland this time we checking out uh the finnish national team somebody added this to the playlist so i had to check it out y'all know i'm a sports fan myself uh love sports really watching sports uh basketball in particular uh but we got how finland's national team wrote history and of course that's the wife carrying contest but i'm sure it's talking about hockey ice hockey so we're checking this out this was three years ago you know i usually do sports i have another channel i do sports on but you know it's all right we just you know it's like a documentary style type of thing dw kickoff is the channel y'all make sure y'all subscribe but let's check it out to see how Finland wrote history. November 2019, the Hukayato Eagle Owls write history by qualifying for a major tournament for the oh, first Oh, it's time. not hockey. I thought it was hockey. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, hold up. Let me. Sorry, I did. I should have read the description. Okay, football, football. Okay, I'm used to doing when it comes to. Finland doing great things in sports. I'm used to hockey. That's my B. That's my fault. That's my fault. But we here football. Eh? Okay. Nice. Uh, he flying in the air. Dang. Temu Pukki is already a living legend with 10 goals firing his team into the 2020 wow. European Championships. It's undescribable. Hey. People run into the pitch. I got some hawks uh, in tears and uh, saying how much <laughs> it meant to them. This is for and they love. And, uh, we showed what we what we can do as a as a nation. Nice. <laughs> for all of the people in Finland who who live football, so it feels feels amazing. It's been uh, it's been a long dream for all of us. The Finnish Football Dang, Association was founded back in 1907. 113 mm. years later, the men's team will be competing at its first Euros. Wow, that's crazy. You've been a long time coming, Finland. It can get pretty cold in Finland, and in the winter, very dark. It's also one of the most sparsely populated countries in Europe. The country has a total population oh. of five and a half million, that's less cool. than that of some major cities in the continent. But despite the distinctly chilly conditions, the Finns are officially the most upbeat people on the planet, according mm. to the UN's World Happiness Report. They do talented on them bottles. Lucas, I don't even know how to say that. Like people man. are really closed and uh, rude, but I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, uh, it's a pretty, it's a country that uh, is. Uh, how would, I, how would I describe it? Socially introvert. That uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we uh, like to hold our own uh, space, but uh, when somebody needs help, we always there to help. Yeah. Nice. And Finns oh, need be. no help hey, when it comes to inventing weird and wonderful pastimes, <laughs> from wife carrying to swamp football. Okay, I need to check out swamp football. But There's some other ones I gotta check out. Pursuit is of course Dang. going to the sauna. The country has two and a half million sweat lodges, as the word literally means. That's one sauna for every two people. Oh, I know that water cold. But sports-wise, ice hockey tops everything. And people don't blink when the president takes to the rink. The as president looked like he could play. He looked like he got some skills. The football, the men's team at least, have always been minnows and had never qualified for a tournament before. It's wow. been a long fight to get to the Euros. In the history. That's nice. A lot of disappointments, and even we have in Finland we have a own word to football. Sports journalists. In other countries they play football, and here in Finland we play potkupallo, which Potko means pala. like kicking the ball without purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we have been always. <laughs> it's a country who has not achieved anything oh so, so, it, so it's it's really strange to be in this situation now hey this is a major deal i remember playing sports especially in my hometown we were known for not really doing too much and then playing basketball one year we made it to playoffs and everybody showed up because they were like wow it makes a difference you know 
Now the men's football team are kicking with a purpose as a new chapter in Finnish sporting history dawns. So what's changed? We accompany HJK Helsinki's youth team coach Daniel Ersin to Lahti. Lahti. This is the hometown of Jari Lidmanen, Finland's most capped and arguably greatest ever player with 137 appearances. Wow. Hence the statue. Wait a minute. Isn't that do y'all remember the basketball guy I was talking about? I think his name was Larry too. Right? Even in the day player with 137 appearances, hence the statue. Even I always in the mess up on his last Palo, name. Finland man. produced a number of good players. Former Finland defender Petri Pasana knows what's different now. Uh -huh. When I played, we had Jari Litmanen, Sami Hyypia, big names, big stars, and uh, Hierarchy was there. You know, we got along just fine, but this is different, this team, you know? You have Pukki, you have Lukas Rodetski, but mm. those two guys are just, just part of the team. So, in that sense, I think it's a team that Finnish people can really identify themselves, because it's just a bunch of normal guys who really have shown that if you're a unit, you can achieve big things, That's although nice. your material is a bit less than probably the most of the good teams. Regular guys, perhaps, but more than just normal on the pitch. The standard of football has improved in recent years, thanks also to the Finnish FA committing more resources to youth development. That's good. Nowadays, the coaches in Finland, they just have more information available through technology, through data, and they're more aware of the qualities they can, they could, you know, make better when coaching those young players. And, you know, when that happens mm -hmm. all over the Finland, the logical, you know, the next step would be that we just get more better players. Yeah. If that produces top players, that's another thing. But I think that basic level has risen up a bit. The often mm. harsh climatic. I always think that's a good thing when you you gotta train them young. If you train them young, you you can really build the best players in the world when you start them young. Yeah. Conditions hardly lend themselves to outdoor football. So the building of sports halls with full-size pitches means the youngsters can now practice all year. Oh, he and good. in addition to better facilities, the philosophy behind training programs okay. has likewise entered the modern age. Yeah, they got some skills, when they're I young ones. look back at my youth and also my professional career, I think uh, nobody ever asked me a question how things should be done. I was told how things should be done. Mm. I think now the the coaching has turned more into the pragmatic way that you ask players, make them think by themselves, and uh, mm -hmm. you never tell them the, the the answer directly, and you lead them on. And I think this is the right way currently. Yeah. And I oh, think thanks. now we'll see in a couple of years players that will become adults and go into the professional world. Will I'm sure this will come more and more there as well. Dang. Youth coaches like Daniel Ursin are shaping the future of Finnish football. The focus is on improved training for coaches and kids alike, working That's on nice. skills, technique, and above all, personality development for the budding new stars. Dang. Sometimes we are too humble, I and mean, like yeah, in that uh, can be a outside of. That's what I realize. Sometimes you can be too humble, especially when it comes to sports. Really got to understand. Sometimes you can, you you can. You might be a nice person, but when it comes to competing, you really got like you ain't got to be the rudest person, but you really got to be aggressive, physical. That's what I had to learn because I was a nice person, but I'm like, when it's game time, it's my time. Of the pitch, gotta show and out. Then we are too kind, but we try to change that. Of course, we have to teach them good values like respect the opponent and mm -hmm. all these kind of things. But it, but I think uh, you have to be a little bit. How do you say it? Uh, Aggressive, yeah. yeah. The dream fact. of a new golden generation is well and truly alive. Indoor venues like this one are a step forwards. This is a nice Country's venue. Professional clubs are currently progressing in leaps and bounds. To be honest, this is not only for football. So if you play American football, uh, rugby, whatever, it's it's for mm. for everybody. Nice. This is, has been a really important development, maybe during the last 10 or 15 years. Different clubs have uh, improved their facilities mm -hmm. by their own. And this is creating a new new phenomenon in Finland, which is old news in Central Europe, that we, we, we're, we're starting to have our own training center, at least yeah. the biggest clubs. 
Did we mention before that it can get dark in Finland? The winter evenings are very long. So we have plenty of time to chat about the Eagle Owl's evolution and perhaps take a closer look at the secret to that success. <laughs> you need to be more like a, some kind of a teacher or mm. like a father. How do you, I don't know how to, you say it, but uh, something like that because uh, so short time that they are together and it's more about mentality. Yeah. That's a fact. I can see in the beach that the players enjoy what they do together. What is their own uh, like ambition when they're playing? Mm -hmm. What is those uh, and attitude when they're playing? You, you you can get that also when you're watching that. What was yeah. that about needing a teacher? Just as well that Marku Kaneva is Finland's head coach. During his playing days, he was also an elementary school tutor. The oh clarity, wow! How he speaks to the players with, uh, I mean, he's, he was a teacher, or he's, he's a nice. teacher still. Uh, when he now he's of course has a, has a job as a coach, but uh, <laughs> the way he talks to the players, the way he uh, compliments them, and uh, I think that's, uh, that's reason, important. Re reason uh, respect in the, in midst of players. Yeah. Sometimes it's pretty funny up there when he's holding the meetings with this. Uh, uh, the cane, he's pointing uh, uh, towards the TV, <laughs> and uh, no, we have a laugh, we have a laugh, and he's a uh, he he's a guy who has a bit of bit of humor and self irony as yeah, well. So that's that's, uh, that's important. Canova, Very commonly important known by coaching. his nickname Rive, has been to the European Championships before, in charge of the under twenty one nice. side in two thousand and nine. As a leader, if you're a teacher or a head coach or a coach, generally you have to handle individuals in the group and get them work together mm -hmm. and of course um, that's true i learned a lot when i worked as a teacher and, and, and those tools i got from that education i have a use as, as a coach as well but i don't want to take all the honor the honor belongs to the players and, mm -hmm. and the whole team including staff as well i like the way he the thinks the eagle house high flying coach. achievements Seemed have been like duly one. honored by the press with the association's media day event attended by domestic and international journalists. And the media can always be counted on to conjure up a catchy name for a new of phenomenon. Course. We have this word, revolution, which is, revolution. comes from this name, nickname, Rive. It's happening now, the re revolution. Rive. Rive. You can Rive. stop the revolution. <laughs> Dang, that's dope. Yeah, I honestly thought they were talking about hockey for it. Hey. Finland are living the dream. Nice. The revolution. Revolution. No, I'm speechless, so uh, thank you, thank you, Finland, and uh, I hope I did you proud, yeah. Hey. We're not going there just to lose, we, we, we will go there to try to get some points and, and even go through from the group stage. I hope that this will inspire and motivate <laughs> the people on the show. football. The kids, all the football players, the parents, uh, coaches, everyone. Oh, this was nice, this was nice. No, this was good. This was good. Um, yeah, it makes a difference. Like I said, you start them young. Man, it's always good. But shout out to Finland. I don't know because um, I see the women's the women's soccer t uh, football teams have been playing. Because I I said in my Swedish video, uh, the Swedish national the women's national team knocked out USA. Who were, you know, I think former champions, I believe. They real good. That's all I know. And Sweden didn't beat them. So, but now this was good. Uh, hopefully, they're still doing good out here on the football scene, man. Because it's fun. It it makes a difference when you see your national team wins and stuff. Because now all the best players are together. Everybody away from their other club teams and stuff like that. And it, it's just great for the fans to see. I love, I love national I love um, the FIBA sports, of course, but definitely just love when get together for the Olympics and all those things like that. It's always cool. But that's all I have.
for this video y'all hit that subscribe button appreciate whoever added this to the playlist you can still add videos to the playlist y'all be blessed be the best and be you i'm out